Hi, my name is Dr. Boaz Ben David, and I'll be your guide to cognitive psychology. Welcome to the second part of the course. Today we're going to talk about attention. Now I could start by using the obvious puns like pay attention to this course or attention, but this is beneath us by now after one semester. So let's start by asking the big question. What is attention? Now stop for five seconds and try to really think, what is attention? Not so easy after all. So let's go back in time to William James, the forefather and pioneer of psychology in North America. And I'm talking about real psychology, not Freud, Young, and all of their psychobabble. Cognitive psychology was the first and we deserve your respect. So in 1890, he coined the following term. Everyone knows what attention is. It is the taking possession by the mind in vivid form of one out of what seem several simultaneously possible objects or trains of thought. It implies withdrawal from some things in order to deal effectively with others and is a condition which has a real opposite in the confused, dazed, scattered brain state. Simply put, you're asking me, the great William James, the first person to teach psychology in North America, what is attention? Everyone knows what attention is. It is this thing when you choose one thing of, uh, oh, the opposite of attention is when you are confused, which makes us a little bit even more confused. So let's move 100 years to the future, to William Pashler, who was a great scientist by the own rank, who coined the following term. Nobody knows what attention is. And there may even not be an it there to be known about, although of course there might be. Hmm? So attention is the Loch Ness Monster. We're all standing around the lake, we all know it is there, but is it? It is intuitive for everyone to say attention. It became a very popular term. Please pay attention to me, you're not paying attention, my mind is distracted, I can't pay attention, I have attention problems. But what do we really mean when we say attention? Because there are various types of attention. We can talk about divided attention, about focus attention, about space-based attention, about object-based attention. We can talk about top-down attention, about bottom-up attention, about attention that I can control, attention that I can't control. There are just so many types of attention. But are they all the same one? Why is attention important? We need attention to effectively deal with huge amounts of sensory information, but we have physiological limitation in our ability to process it. How is attention efficient? It allows us to give priority to the unexpected, to the new, to the important, and it allows efficient filtering and exploration of the information. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> but we need something to work on together. So let's start with a working definition of attention. Attention by NICER is the allocation of resources and processing to a region, an object, a dimension, and so forth. Attention is resource demanding. Our resources are limited, therefore attention is very useful but we can't attend to everything. A pre-attentive process is a mental activity that organizes the perceptual field before attention arrives at the scene. It is a resource-free process, or at least theoretically, an automatic resource-free process. So attention is a process that demands resources and decides what information will be further processed. The study of attention is an investigation of a cognitive process that cannot be measured directly by measuring its impacts 
on behavior. Remember our first class? The basic idea of cognitive psychology is that you cannot explain human behavior just as a system of stimuli and responses, as a system of reinforcements. There is something else. There are hidden processes that happen in the middle, cognitive processes. We have a measurable external stimulus and a measurable and observable response and in between we have a hidden mediating variable. In the first lecture we'll talk about four networks of attention. Now there are historical reasons why the great Posner wanted to call them networks and why he talked about four, but we're not going to get into them. For now, let's agree that this is a working hypothesis that allows us to study attention. Sustained attention, allocating resources over time while maintaining a steady level of performance. Think about a goalkeeper. He has to be attentive all the time. He cannot lax his attention. Any moment a ball might arrive and he has to catch it. Orienting of attention. This engaging attention from one spatial location to another. Orienting attention and focusing on one spatial location. Disengaging from it and reorienting on a different object or spatial location. Selective attention. Focusing attention on a certain dimension or location while ignoring other distracting stimuli. Think about listening to a conversation in a noisy room. You have to focus your attention on the speech of the target person while ignoring all other noise or conversation around you. Executive function. Overseeing all other attention systems, the ability to deal with a conflicting situation where there are two rivaling options and to allocate resources. Imagine yourself driving a rental car in a new city, in a new country, and you are now standing at the intersection. There are two traffic lights in front of you. Both of them are red. You are in a hurry. Suddenly, one of them switches to green. You reach for the gas, but then you f figure this is not your traffic light, and then you keep your leg on the brake. What you've done here, inhibiting a response by reorienting your attention to focus on the right traffic light, is executive function. So what did we do today? We started by figuring out that no one not even the greatest researchers in the past hundred years knows what attention is. Then we gave a working definition to allow us to talk about attention. We asked what are the important questions that we can ask when we investigate attention. And then we defined four attentional networks. Sustained attention, orienting of attention, selective attention, and executive function. Confused? Great. It is confusing. In class we'll get things in order, but to be frank, I'm investigating attention since 2000, and I still don't have clear answers. What I get is new questions, different questions, interesting questions that allow me to figure out more and more what attention is, or is there an it to investigate. See you in class. Epilogue, The Hunting of the Snark by Lewis Carroll. Just the place for a snark, the bellman cried, as he landed his crew with care, supporting each man on the top of the tide by a finger entwined in his hair. Just the place for a snark, I have said it twice, that alone should encourage the crew. Just the place for a snark, I have said it thrice, what I tell you three times, is true. Unfortunately, in science, we say three times, this is attention, 
and you have to agree that this is the tension. I hope that you, when you graduate and go to grad school and take your PhD, you'll be able to figure out what attention really is. Bye.